there's no doubt um, that it'll help us with retention and turnover. But at the same time, you know, when a housekeeper was making $12 an hour and now they're going to make 18 or 20, we have really changed the lifestyle and the standard of living of thousands of people. And honestly, sincerely, um, it's one of the most rewarding things that I've ever been involved with in my career. In some of your uh, markets, your workers are unionized. Will the pay hikes apply to those who are in a union? 100%. And when we think about the total investment, it's over $100 million. And you know that's not revenue, that's not EBITDA, that's truly at the net income line. So it was a major commitment from the Tribal Council, the Hard Rock Board, um, I think, as you know, a lot of your listeners are aware, we've always worked well with unions. I mean, we're the only company in the history of gaming that gives bonuses to our union employees. Um, it's something that's very important to us. You know, we just opened a brand, brand new hotel in New York City with a great relationship with the unions. And it's something that, you know, that's also very important to us. Uh, how many employees do you have across the nation? You know, there is, we, we say there's over 50,000 people working with the brand globally, and about 37, 38,000 of them are directly employed by Hard Rock slash Seminal Gaming. So, you know, obviously it's a very large organization. The balance, the delta between the two is through our license and franchisees. The large majority of the effectiveness of this particular program is for people here in the United States and North America. Um, there is some slight impact in certain parts of Europe. There's a lot of focus on CNBC on wage inflation. Is that a factor for you? At the highest level, there is no doubt that we could have substantially reduced the total capital that we're willing to commit to our employees, hypothetically maybe given a two or three dollar an hour raise versus a six or seven. But I looked at it that let's be the leader, let's be the head of the curve um, in order to make people feel appreciated. And hopefully in exchange, and I've joked with this with the employees, we, we're doing employee appreciation days at all the locations. We only ask one thing in return, just be the best you can be to your coworkers and to our guests. And we're betting that that formula will work. Um, I personally believe it will. What's your expectation about the way how consumers are feeling affects your business? Um, we're still very optimistic on the culture, the business environment here in Florida. I think when we look at hotel deals um, and frankly, just, you know, integrated resorts in the casino business, there's no doubt there's going to be some softening. We certainly saw that in the month of July, but frankly, you know, I filled up my car today at gas and, you know, and it was $3 and 85 cents a gallon for premium. So, you know, obviously gasoline has come down substantially. And in August, we actually saw some increase in that theoretical area of um, 400 hour Theo per customer. So um, at the same time, I think we're smart enough to know with interest rates rising the way they have, you know, the pressure on people's savings and 401ks that, you know, the last quarter, the first two quarters of next year, there's certainly a question. And what about currency? Is the strong dollar a problem for you when you look at the international business? No. Um, we, we, we love the United States of America, but we love a strong euro, right? Because um, obviously when, when the euro is at a dollar fifteen, dollar twenty, geez, I remember when the euro was at a dollar thirty-six, we're now increasing, you know, because so so much business comes from Europe. So that's obviously goes directly to the EBITDA, the bottom line of the company. So a strong dollar is certainly great for us as a US based company. Um, but when we look at the EBITDA line, um, a, a euro, especially when you look at how much business in the in the restaurant division is in Europe. Um, is uh, more favorable for a strong dollar, obviously a little bit more challenging. And, and for your international businesses, are you having to look skeptically or critically at the prospect of natural gas prices and, and the way that that affects the bottom line business this winter? I, yes, uh, there is no doubt that the war in Ukraine has created tremendous tension in Europe and not just from, you know, now Germany having challenges with their um, energy supply from Russia, even prior to that, I think that's obviously going to exaggerate this even further, but people are not traveling, you know, we're not seeing anywhere near the tourism that we traditionally see in Europe. And when you look at the cafe business and you look at places like Barcelona, 
and London and Athens and all these great international gateway cities where we have prime real estate. Tourism in some cases is down 20, 30, 40%. So obviously, you know, the hotel, I'm sorry, the cafe division of Hard Rock clearly relies a lot on that person traveling the globe. And there's no doubt that's had an impact um, on our business in Europe. I think for the first time, certainly since we've owned the brand, which goes back to 2006 when we announced it, the domestic United States business is actually outperforming our restaurant business in Europe. And that is solely based on tourism.